Hey YouTube, I'm just here to kind of tell you why that this is a gesture that you should not be offended by. But more so, I'm actually here to talk to you a little bit about this, uh, you know, odd contraption, Halloween costume looking thing, Jurassic Park technically, uh, Tig Monster Claw. Now what this is for is uh, for us noobs and uh, for even the professional hopefully. Uh, is in order to feed rod, you know, usually it's kind of a cumbersome task that requires uh, two to three fingers, uh, more precisely three, uh, and then two, well, you can just kind of get away with it. Uh, either way, this is very complicated and uh, probably the most hardest task I think uh, learning in TIG, I would imagine. A um, little bit more about that in a minute, but either way, the purpose of these is quite simply to aid in the ability to feed rod. Now, what you see here is I do not have uh, the rod actually resting on my finger. Uh, it's just kind of sitting there in space. Technically, it's actually resting up uh, just through sheer force of gravity, holding across the claw. But the reason why I was able to do this is just simply because uh, these little channels here, 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 and here. That's four total. Uh, these two are kind of combined in. It is a little hard for you to see, but we'll go ahead and get a little close. And, you know, it's kind of a ride path there and a ride path there. But um, that's that side. And then we have this side. We have one path here, one path here, and one path here. And these are all three different kinds of, uh, those are three different kinds of ride paths, and that was uh, four and they give the rods different kinds of paths to ride on but the catch is is when I cut these paths I cut them in uh, CAD so they are geometrically shaped to you know basically cut out as if a rod were sitting in there so that's why they can ride exceptionally smooth and enough talking let's go ahead and kind of show you what we're talking about here and as you can see I am feeding the rod very little input from my uh, pointer finger. All the job, all the work is being done by the uh, thumb. It's a little shaky, but again, noob, and I'm just kind of shaky in general. But this is also why I developed this, because uh, for me to do this freehand without this you know, control, I would probably be all over the place, and I'd be burning up tungsten left and right. So this is going to hopefully give me a lot more control. But this is one angle. All right. So we have another angle, this is a little bit more of a deeper angle, which again, I can feed it basically any angle. In this case, yes, I am using my index or pointer finger, but that's simply to kind of give a little tension as I slide it down. But either way, you know, this is fairly effortless and I can retract and it's all very smooth and it's all very consistent. As you can see, the tip kind of rides along the same path. Uh, obviously, it's not being fed and eaten away, so there's a little bit more of a cumbersome task to demonstration, but nonetheless, I think you can kind of see where we're going here. Now, again, as mentioned, we have multiple uh, angles to work with, so we have, again, more of a deeper angle. And we'll go back to the other two here real quick to kind of give you an idea. That's kind of the default angle, I would say, and then this would be more of the sharp and deep angle. And then we have, you know, a very, very deep angle. And this kind of, you know, gives exceptional control, but, you know, requires a little bit more of a maneuvering. Now, we also have these guide holes here up in front, which again, you can kind of see those two holes. And what that does is you just kind of insert your rod. If you can get it right. Oops, that's the one that goes across. And I'm an idiot, that's all. User error. Uh, but again, so now it goes directly through the claw. And this means that, you know, I can kind of put it out at any angle, uh, just kind of play around with it, and it's not going anywhere. You know, and I'm not using my hands to hold this, it's just holding there by tension. And again, this is a very precise control angle. Um, shape the user but you can get a very smooth rod feed using this. And for the final angle, we have more of an upwards, 
which this one is kind of a more of a experimental, if we'll say, but it allows you to, you know, kind of give some control. However, slip this off, turn it slightly to the side rather than straight up and down like so. You just kind of cock it off to the side. And then this allows you to, you know, just ride along that bottom path and just cut right through the same keyhole. And it's just a very, very, very smooth feed and very precise, which is what I need. And that's what TIG requires. So point in case, this is kind of my little uh, introduction to YouTube and my introduction to TIG welding. And as you can see, these slip on and off very easily, but they stayed in place without much of a hassle. And all in all, kind of give you a little idea. There's the two keyholes. Here's our ride pass. And then here's our other ride pass along the claw. And that's what essentially will hopefully give you superior control and possibly change the game of TIG. And at least take the rod feed uh, issue out of it. Hmm. And one thing I didn't mention quite here, I need to add in, would be this is a 1 8 rod. So here's a little gauge. There's 1 8 not lying, really is, probably familiar with this gauge. So, that's what this rod accepts. And it also does accept smaller rods. There's a channel cut out for 1 8 on all of them, and then a channel for basically the smallest rod you've possibly ever come up with in any of the other channels as well. So it's very versatile, and uh, you'll find this thing on thingiverse.com. Uh, so in other words, it's free to the world. So I really hope you enjoy it. And yes, I'm sweating profusely. It's Arizona. I'm in my garage. So thank you again and have a great day.